In three regions around the world, governments have agreed to establish international institutions to monitor and protect human rights. One of these is the Inter-American System for the Protection of Human Rights, created by the Organization of American States. Engagement with the Inter-American System can be a powerful way of raising awareness about a human rights issue, giving victims an opportunity to be heard, and bringing about change. The system is made up of two bodies, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. Each has different functions. The Commission monitors human rights conditions in all 35 countries in the Americas. It receives complaints, called petitions, to determine if a state has violated an individual or group's human rights, and to identify how the state should compensate the victim and avoid similar injustices in the future. The seven commissioners visit countries in the region, hold thematic hearings on issues of concern, and publish reports on human rights conditions. The work of the Commission's rapporteurs helps it gain expertise and raise awareness in priority topics, including the rights of specific communities or groups. For its part, the court issues judgments in complaints brought against states that have accepted its jurisdiction, but only when those cases are not successfully resolved by the Commission. 21 states have accepted the court's jurisdiction. Both the court and Commission can ask the government to take action to prevent irreparable harm to the subject of a petition or to an individual or community in immediate danger. These actions are called provisional or precautionary measures. The inter-American system is not meant to take the place of national courts or to second-guess the decisions of local judges, so long as the domestic proceedings respected the party's fundamental rights. The commission and court cannot decide individual guilt or innocence. Petitioners must generally try to resolve the issue using regular legal proceedings in their own country first. By using the petition system, requesting thematic hearings before the commission, meeting with or submitting information to a rapporteur, and using the Commission's reports to educate the public, advocates can raise awareness of a human rights problem and increase pressure for governmental action. Often, engagement with the inter-American system should be part of a broader advocacy strategy and should be followed by local efforts to monitor compliance, negotiate with the government, and make the affected community aware of the outcomes. All countries, or states, in the Americas have agreed to respect the human rights identified in the American Declaration on the Rights and Duties of Man. Some states have also ratified regional human rights treaties, which include the American Convention on Human Rights, and treaties on specific topics. Through these agreements, states have promised to ensure the rights to life, liberty, humane treatment, equality, freedom of religion, freedom of thought and expression, freedom of association and assembly, privacy, family life, movement, fair trial, property, judicial protection, honor and dignity, a name, nationality, participation in government, the benefits of culture, health, education, asylum, work, and social security. Our understanding of these rights is continually expanding. Two separate mechanisms allow individuals and groups in the Americas to seek the protection of the inter-American system when their human rights have been violated or are at risk. These mechanisms, the individual petition system and requests for precautionary measures, each have their own rules and procedures. The petitioner, or person submitting the complaint, can be an individual or group of people or a non-governmental organization recognized by any OAS member state. If the petitioner and victim are not the same person, the commission can keep the petitioner's identity confidential. But the commission must always have the petitioner's current contact information and the petitioner's authorization if someone else will represent the petitioner or communicate with the commission on his or her behalf. Petitions and requests may use the standard form and can be submitted online, 
by mail, by email, or by fax. Whenever possible, petitions should be written in the official language of the accused country. The petition must provide specific minimum information, as listed in Article 28 of the Commission's Rules of Procedure. Identify the victim or group of victims who may include family members if they also suffered harm. Individually name the victims or identify the specific defined group or community to which they belong. Describe the alleged harm in detail. How did a situation, occurrence, or series of events keep an individual or group from enjoying certain human rights? Explain why the government is responsible for the harm through the actions, acquiescence, or omissions of the state itself or its representatives. Identify the specific officers, agencies, law, or policies that caused or allowed the violation to occur. Identify the state where the violation occurred and the state responsible for its occurrence. These are usually the same country, but may be different or multiple countries. If the state has not ratified the American Convention, the petition must allege a violation of a right protected by the American Declaration. Identify the date or time frame of the alleged violation, which must be after the state agreed to comply with the American Declaration or American Convention. The victim must exhaust domestic remedies, which means going to the local courts and pursuing civil or criminal proceedings to try to resolve the problem. This generally means appealing to the highest court of appeals that has jurisdiction if a successful outcome is not reached in the lower courts. Submit the petition within six months of when the victim exhausted domestic remedies. If domestic remedies are unavailable, ineffective, or insufficient, the petition must be submitted within a reasonable time, or as soon as it is clear that the state is unlikely to remedy the violation on its own. The same complaint cannot be submitted to the Commission and to another international dispute settlement mechanism with jurisdiction, such as a UN Human Rights Treaty Body Complaints Mechanism. If requesting precautionary measures, explain the risks faced, whether the state is informed of those risks, and, if so, if the government has undertaken any protective action or investigation. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights processes petitions in three stages, initial evaluation, admissibility, and merits. In certain circumstances, the Commission may then refer the case to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. Requests for precautionary measures are processed differently and may be decided within one week or several months, depending on the urgency and the information submitted. The Commission processes petitions and requests for precautionary measures with the support of the lawyers who work in its Executive Secretariat in Washington, D.C. Within a few weeks of receiving a petition, the Registry section of the Commission's Executive Secretariat sends written acknowledgement to the petitioner and assigns the petition a number. Petitions are evaluated in order of receipt, unless there are particularly urgent reasons to evaluate a petition sooner, such as if the victim is very young, very old, has a terminal illness or alleges a systemic pattern of violations. The registry decides to either open the petition for processing or close the petition with no further analysis. If the information provided is insufficient, the registry may request additional information from the petitioner. In this stage, the commission relies only on information submitted in writing by the petitioner to determine if the petition meets the requirements of Article 28 of the Rules of Procedure the state is not informed and does not participate. If the petition is open for processing, the file is transferred to the section of the Executive Secretariat with responsibility for that country, and the petition and evidence are sent to the state for its response, or observations, which it must submit within two months. At this point, the Commission can also help negotiate a friendly settlement between the parties. In the admissibility stage, the Commission decides whether it has competence over the matter based on where, when, and under which state's responsibility the alleged violation occurred. And it determines whether the petition meets the non-duplication, timeliness, and exhaustion requirements, and if the facts alleged tend to establish a violation of the state's human rights obligations. 
the commissioners consider the arguments and evidence of both the state and the petitioner and may hold a hearing or working meeting to gather additional information from the parties. The commission publishes its decision on admissibility and sends it to the state and petitioner. If the petition is admissible, it is given a case number and enters the merits phase. Sometimes, the commission will decide the merits at the same time as admissibility and issue only one report, such as when the victim alleges a violation of due process that also prevented him or her from exhausting domestic remedies. In the merits phase, the petitioner can request financial assistance from the Legal Assistance Fund for the costs of pursuing the case. The petitioner and then the state each have three months to submit initial arguments on the merits and may submit additional information in writing or in working meetings or a public hearing before the commission. The commissioners decide whether the state is responsible for a violation of the victim's rights. If the commission finds a violation, it prepares a preliminary report and list of recommendations for how the state can repair the violation and prevent its reoccurrence. The state has three months to show it will comply with the recommendations. Otherwise, the commission either publishes the merits report or refers the case to the Inter-American Court. The commission can refer a case to the court only if the state has accepted its jurisdiction and after considering the opinion of the victim and petitioner, the seriousness of the violation, and the relevance of the case to the Inter-American jurisprudence and the national legal systems. The court will issue judgments on the admissibility, merits, and reparations, and may hold its own hearings. After a decision on the merits, the parties report on compliance with the recommendations. Petitioners should maintain a relationship with the victim and with local organizations that can provide information, help negotiate with the government, and advocate for state compliance. We do thematic reports on various topics and advocates can always submit information to us that can be included in the thematic reports. They don't have to come to Washington, they can send it ahead of time. They can also monitor our website to learn about which topics we're focused on so that they know uh, when they can send it particular kinds of information. And of course we have the case processing and the on-site visits that occur. We made an on-site visit to Paraguay two years ago to look at compliance with some cases that had been brought um, and litigated through the Inter-American system to the court, as well as some pending cases, all involving indigenous land rights. And a year later, I went back to Paraguay for the transfer of title of ancestral lands back to one of the indigenous communities. And since then, two of the three others have gotten their lands back as well. So at this point, we only have one case that we're waiting on. And all of the complaints that had been brought to the inter-American system will have been resolved in favor of the indigenous peoples. Once we had the hearing approved, um, we found that that actually accelerated some pieces of our work. Um, we got some responses that we had not gotten from the Border Patrol and from the Department of Homeland Security. Um, so we have a, a tour set up of Border Patrol facilities, which is something that we had requested for several years, actually. And maybe not entirely, but we think it is at least in some part due to the fact that they had this public event coming up. Um, so we think that um, there might be some more opportunities like that, where there's things that we had already been working on that perhaps are gonna happen more quickly um, as a result uh, of the hearing today. And so we're hoping that um, we'll have some more opportunities like that. In our system, the fact that you can now see hearings on the internet that you can actually see how the system works. You can see hearings at the court as well. You can follow hearings so you don't have to travel to Costa Rica to follow what the court is doing. These are, I think, among the most significant advances because it opens up the system to, to people who really want to keep abreast of what's going on.